today we are going to make chicken and sweet corn soup. It's a really healthy, wholesome dish which you can make at home, especially in the winter on cold days. Really good, easy soup to make. It's a Chinese speciality. You can get it in a Chinese uh, takeaway, but actually it's really easy to make. There's only a few ingredients. We've got some um, creamed sweet corn. Okay, so creamed style sweet corn. Um, you can buy, you can buy normal sweet corn in a tin, um, but you will have to blend it first if you're gonna do that. So if you get your mum to purchase cream styled sweet corn, that will be the easiest when you get into school, but that is the best one to use. Uh, so here are my ingredients. I've got some chicken. So I'm only gonna use one chicken thigh today. I've got some um, spring onions for a garnish that I've got at the end. I've got uh, chicken cubes. Okay, so it's chicken stock cubes. You can use uh, those little pot cubes or you can use chicken powder, you can use all sorts. But I like to use the good old Knorr chicken stock cube. And I've got some cream sweet corn here. Um, so these are the simple ingredients that we need for this dish. Use a bit of salt and pepper later on as well. Um, just want to show you some things about use by dates, the difference between a use by date and a best before date. Now if you look at this chicken meat, you can see if this camera zooms in, you'll just see that it's got a use by date here, okay? The food must be consumed before that date. Even if the food smells nice, still smells fresh, or looks okay, it's not safe to use um, the product if it's gone past its use by date. This is still in date, fortunately. Um, the foods that usually have use by dates like that are usually perishable foods or meat products in particular. So make sure you always stick to use by dates. This can actually has a best before date. It says on this tin, uh, best before date on the side of the can. And as you can see, it's two years from now is the date that um, you shouldn't use this beyond. However, a best before date doesn't necessarily tell you the food is completely off, okay? People say you can actually still use a tin like this years after it's gone past the best before date okay as long as the tin is in fully intact you can use that well into the future so probably three four years later you could use that um, so it's just the best before it's a product date for that um, and you've just got a best before date on these chicken cubes as well so uh, I've got a packet of chicken thighs here. Um, you can see that actually this is only £1.99 per kilo. It would be really simple for me to drop by uh, a breast of chicken which has been deboned and de-skinned already, okay? But actually, it's much better value for money if I buy these chicken thighs. I'm only gonna use one today. Um, these chicken thighs, I'm gonna peel the skin off and debone it, okay, in front of you. So that is a better way to do it. For our preparation in school, I'd like you to think about either bringing in a chicken that's been done at home by your mum or yourself at home and prepared, or to bring a breast of chicken, because that works just as well. In fact, actually the dish we're doing today, um, a bit of leftover cooked meat from the Sunday roast, a little bit of chicken from the Sunday roast is ideal. You can just pop that in the chicken and sweet corn soup. It works really, really well to use up some of those leftovers. If you're a vegetarian, you can use mycoprotein alternatives such as corn or um, textured vegetable protein, which works really well as well. But we're using chicken because it's a chicken and sweet corn soup. But if you are a vegetarian, make sure you bring in what you prefer to put in instead of chicken. So, here we go, we've got one breast of chicken. I'm just going to show you two knives actually I've got. This is a typical knife you'll probably find in your kitchen and we certainly have these kind of knives in school. This is what we'll use today. Um, I like to actually use this cleaver. I'm half Chinese as many of you may know um, and I like to use this cleaver so I'll show you that in a second. Here's our breast of chicken. We're going to take the skin off okay for two reasons. One it's healthier to take the skin off and second we don't want the dish to be too fatty. So I'm just going to use a knife. I can just peel the skin. So remember you can do this at home or you can purchase um, 
a chicken or breast of chicken that's already had this done to it. So you just peel off the chicken like that. You can cut off a little bit of the excess fat. Okay, so there's often a bit of fat underneath. So um, fat on a meat, it tends to be saturated fat, okay, which is the less healthy type of fat that we're looking for. So unsaturated fats are the slightly healthier ones. Okay, but everything in moderation, that's fine. Okay, as you can see here, I've got a bone running through. I just want to take off that bone, and I can just do that very simply by using my knife very gently, fingers out of the way. So notice my claw grip. It means my fingers are well behind the knife, and I can just cut the bone out. Now, like I say, easier if you just get a breast of chicken and do and we can use that instead for this dish okay I'll just take a little bit of useful meat and again that that can be used in a stock later um, but still that is far cheaper to get a nice thigh okay really tasty meat as well much much cheaper than buying a breast of chicken so what I want you to do is to slice as thin as you can so again, using that claw grip, so fingers and nails behind the meat, and then you can slice through like so. I'm actually going to use my big cleaver, because I can cut much quicker with it, as you can see. We don't have these in school, but same principle, fingers behind the knife, and then just cut through. We've got a bit of soft bone there, so I'll just chop that off. So, so as thin as you can do it, if you need help with this, then ask your teacher and they can help you. Or in fact, you can do this at home and bring it in already sliced up. But when you put it in the fridge, make sure you put all the raw meat in a label bag into the meat fridge at school when you come in with it. So first thing in the morning, uh, take it out of the fridge at home and then bring it straight into school, go up to the food tech room and put it in the meat fridge. Do not leave it sitting around in your bag all day. Believe me, it will not taste nice. We'll just pop it into the bag. And this will all go into the waste bin. Right, so we've got our chicken which has been sliced really thinly because we want it as thin as possible. Uh, chicken is actually a high biological value protein. What that means is it's got all of the essential amino acids for a healthy diet inside it. So meat is uh, often what people refer to as a protein, a very rich protein source. So we've got chicken here, you can have beef, pork, all of those things. For this dish, chicken and sweet corn soup, obviously we've got chicken. Now a few things to say about chicken. You must always fully cook chicken, okay? Um, it carries E. coli, salmonella, those meats really must be cooked all the way through to make sure you kill any bacteria that are left on them. Okay, people also say do not wash your chicken before you cook it. Okay, in the olden days people used to wash their chicken, they used to get it out of the packet and wash it, but actually the new advice is you must not wash your chicken, put it straight in the oven or put it straight into your dish and cook it properly. So there is a high risk of salmonella or E. coli if you do not cook it fully. I'm going to uh, put a bit of seasoning on it. Always season your food. Okay, so I've just got a bit of white pepper on there. Okay, I've got a little bit of salt. So I'll just pour that into my hand so I don't put too much in. Uh, so just a little pinch of salt. Okay, pinch of salt on my chicken. And I've got a little bit of soy sauce because it's a Chinese dish. We're just gonna put a tiny bit of soy sauce on. Um, here, not 100% necessary, so have you, if you haven't got any soy sauce at home, a bit of salt and pepper is absolutely fine. Okay, one other thing I'm going to add to this is some corn flour. Okay, all Chinese dishes uh, where we prepare meat, we often put a little bit of corn flour in. Okay, and that just helps it make it a bit smoother. But if you haven't got corn flour at home or you don't like the texture, with a bit of corn flour on, then you can just leave that off. So really important, just salt and pepper are the main things, but I'm gonna put a touch of 
corn flour in. So, as I said, tiny bit of corn flour, only half a teaspoon here, helps the flavours stick to the meat and also makes the texture of the meat a little bit smoother. All Chinese dishes with meat, we always put a tiny bit of corn flour on it. So that's a little trick of the trade, a little secret that the Chinese takeaway and the Chinese restaurants use um, to make the meat a little bit softer and a bit smoother. So it's got a bit of a smoother texture on the outside of it. I've got my cream sweet corn straight into the pan. Okay, and I'm going to put a really good tip is to have one tin of sweet corn to two parts water. So I'm going to put two tins of water in. So if you only buy a half a tin, okay, a small tin, then we only use half the amount of water. So one part sweet corn, two parts water. One, two. And then we need to just boil it. So light your hob, boil it up. So just give it a quick stir to mix up all of the sweet corn into the water. I'm going to poach my chicken in this by dropping in my chicken later on. And also I'm going to show you the special little trick where you pour in the egg really, really slowly so you get those streaks of egg that you see in a traditional, typical sweet corn chicken and sweet corn soup at the Chinese takeaway. So I've got my chicken cube here. I'm going to pop in my chicken cube. I'm just going to crumble it in. I'm actually only going to use, well actually I'm going to use all the whole thing. There we go. Lots of flavour. Okay. So you can either use some chicken powder or you can buy bought in chicken stock or you can also use those little pots of stock. While you're waiting for your broth to get boiling, you can whip your egg. If you get, I deliberately drop some shell in, um, you can just pick it out, give it a good whip. Give it a fork. Okay, so the method of doing that is just go over and under like that. So if it starts to overboil, then you can just quickly take it off the hob or turn the gas on. Because I got fancy pans my handles get really really hot so I used to have to use a little oven glove. The ones at school you've got plastic handles, hopefully your ones at home have plastic handles too. Okay so as you can see it's bubbling away now which is what we're looking for. I'm going to now thicken that up with a little bit of corn flour. I've just got some cold water mixed in with the corn flour and I'm going to use something called starch gelatinization to thicken this up. Now your mums and your dads might have Thicken gravy up using this method in the past. So use some cold water from the tap with a bit of corn flour in there. Okay, I've got about uh, a level tablespoon of corn flour in here for this amount. Okay, and I'm just going to, while it's boiling really vigorously, pour in the corn flour and keep stirring a little bit at a time. See how thick it becomes. It's getting quite thick actually, quite quickly. So I probably won't use all of it. Thicken it up like that. Now, I'm going to add my meat a little bit at a time. I've got a whole thigh here. That's probably a lot of chicken for this amount of soup. So I'm probably just going to do about three quarters of it because I can use that later on. Actually, I'm going to use the whole lot because I like chicken and I'm hungry. Okay, just drop it in, not in one big clump, otherwise it will all just stick together. Right, cooking a meat like this in a boiled broth like this, it's called poaching. So we're just poaching meat. I'm just gonna wash my hands quickly, because I've touched the raw meat. So be really, really careful whenever you touch raw meat that you wash your hands in between. I've actually touched the, the spoon handle with my raw meat hands. So I'm just gonna wash my spoon as well. Right, because the water was boiling so vigorously, that chicken is actually cooked really quickly. It's probably been, only been in there for about a minute. And that, because I cut, cut, cut it really fine as well, 
is probably enough. So if you look at the meat, you can see it's all gone a, 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 a whiter colour, so it's not pink anymore. It's gone white. I'm just going to leave it in that little bit longer just because it's chicken and you need to make sure you fully cook chicken. I'm now going to pour in my egg, my raw egg. I want to turn it onto the full power so it's bubbling away and I'm going to pour, pour it in and very slowly I'm going to stir it and then I should get streaks inside my chicken sweet corn soup. So I've got enough um, soup here for a good family of four. Um, I'm just going to ladle that into a Chinese bowl like so. I'm going to pop a tiny bit of garnish on top to make it look pretty. So a bit of that spring onion that I cut earlier. And there we go, chicken and sweet corn soup. I've got it in this little Chinese bowl and a Chinese traditional soup bowl. And let's try it. That's absolutely perfect. Okay, so hopefully you can enjoy that. Really cheap meal, really good for the summer. I'm um, really good for the winter when it's nice and nice and cold outside and you need to warm yourself up with some soup. Thank you.